Hi everyone, I don't normally do this, I'm doing a voiceover, but I didn't record this as I was doing it, so um, let's hope this works out. Uh, first of all, to do this painting, I'm doing a very quick sketch, very lightly, using um, just an ordinary pencil. This is any old pencil. Um, I'm working on a piece of Meaden 10 by 7 cold press watercolour paper on a block, which means that it won't um, buckle or cockle when I put water on it, which is always handy. I do find this is a very convenient way of um, controlling water. <clears throat> I always used to stretch my paper using paper tape. That was when it was hard to get blocks at a reasonable price. Um, but nowadays we can benefit from this labour-saving um, invention that uh, is coming to us from China in, uh, you know, these Meaden pads are very, very inexpensive and the paper, I really am finding it excellent. Um, so basically all I've done here is draw, drawn a rectangle, which I've um, added, I've added two shutters to this drawing, but as you'll see as we go forward, I left the one on the left-hand side out when I came to paint it because I felt it was too much of a good thing, so to speak. So I just painted straight over the top of my drawing. And that's something that you can always do when you're doing a, um, a painting. You don't have to follow slavishly to what you've done um, uh, in your preparatory sketch. You can alter it as you go along and probably for the better, you know. Um, I did make a few mistakes and um, I tried to correct them as best I could, but I was keeping this very, very loose because I wanted to do the whole thing in about 20 minutes. Um, <clears throat> you know, time's a valuable commodity, isn't it? So you don't want to hang around. And um, sometimes the best things come in quick packages. So I've done the sketch. I'm not going to think about it too much. I'm not going to do any corrections. I know that bits of it are very rough and um, just in indicate roughly where I'm going to put things. And I'm excited to come in with the paint. I just picked up a little bit of pre-mixed um, junk that was in my palette there just to get the tones started. And now I'm adding fresh colour from the, from the selection I have here. I'm using Kuretake paint, but it doesn't matter what you use. I use the, the Kuretake because it's handy. Um, I don't have to keep getting out more paint and so on and so forth. But it, and it's absolutely identical in the way it works. I don't find any difference between the way the Kuretake... I know some people say it's like it's, it's opaque, but it isn't. <clears throat> excuse me, unless you actually use it really, really thickly, um, you, it's just as transparent as any other paint. And you'll see that when you see how I'm going to put in several layers of yellow in these little squares. And, um, you know, the colour underneath shines through the colour on top, which is what you want. And that's um, kind of transparent painting um, characteristic, which... Uh, which we're all after, and you can get it just as easily with Kuretake as anything else. And I'm not in, you know, I don't have any allegiance to Kuretake, I just happen to find it easier to use. I'm going to cough, I'm sorry. <clears throat> it's early in the morning. So now I've got all my um, panes of glass painted in, and I'm just going for a completely um, yellow window without too much um, attention to any shadows or anything that might be inside and I'm dabbing out a little bit where I feel it's gone a little bit dark. Um, you're just using a you know a, a tissue there that happened to be handy and then the next thing to do is to start bringing in some of the darks. So what I should have done at this point and I didn't, I was lazy, I should have put the um, hairdryer on it and made sure that the yellow was completely dry. And I didn't, and I made myself more work because when I came close with the blacks, um, I had a bit of running going on and I had to correct that. But for the time being, I'm okay. And I've picked up some brown here, some raw umber, mixed with a bit of raw sienna, or burnt sienna rather. And I'm just painting the first layer of the wall um, which into which this window is set. And... Um, pondering my um, next step, which is I'm going to paint the shutter and I'm putting in the shadows on the shutter. The shutter is slatted like we have here in France quite often. And I'm literally just very roughly painting in a hint of the louvers on the, on the shutter. 
and uh, trying to <clears throat> consider the perspective. <clears throat> so they point upwards at the top and then because my eye level is not at the top, <clears throat> they start to point down as you go down to the bottom of the shutter and um, just keeping it very, very simple. And now I'm beginning to put in some shadowy effects on the window frame. Um, if this was a white window frame, it would still, because it's night time outside where I'm standing, um, it would still be dark if you think about it. When you, <clears throat> when you um, see white in the dark, sometimes it can be quite greyish. Now here's the mistake that I made, which was to start painting too close to that yellow. I thought it had dried and it hadn't. So we're getting some, some bleeding there from the, um, from the lines. But I ploughed on, undaunted, I continued, but I shouldn't have, okay? I should have stopped, I should have dried it, and I would have saved myself some hassle. But it was okay in the end. Now here's another mistake that I made, because I should have put the leaves on the plants before I painted the bars behind the plants. I could have painted the bars at the top, but I should have stopped down there um, and put in the leaves because when I came to put in the leaves later, I can see I was sort of thinking about that as I had done that and thinking, oops, I made a mistake. Um, when I came to put in the leaves, it was very difficult to get them to hide the bars behind because I'd done that in black and Payne's grey, which is a staining sort of thing. And I couldn't get that to disappear. So never mind. I thought to myself, it's OK. Now I put some quite intense black up there. I'm dabbing away to try and get rid of my backgrounds there. It's okay, it all turned out in the end. Um, never panic, just keep going. Uh, up the top there I put some nice black and I'm adding now, so just dropping in little bits of black <clears throat> into the shutter as well to give some random shadowy effects. And um, we'll come down this side of the window too. And this is a point at which I said to myself, I'm not going to paint two of these shutters. I'm just going to be lazy and go over the whole thing. One shutter is enough for me. And now I'm just putting some basically clean water at the top of that very dark area to encourage the paint to sort of flow upwards. And um, it should give me a couple of backgrounds there with any luck. Um, and now let's reinforce some of the, the yellow light inside the window. And I'm just, as I said before, um, the yellows are transparent. So you go over the top of what you've got. And when it's dry, you'll see that there is a nice um, sort of, I don't know, blotchy, patchy effect. And I've lifted out some of my um, runs on the right hand side there, but that's that's great because again, you're going to go over the top of that with another wash. And this is this is actually what I call loose painting. Um, you let the water and the paint do the work and you respond accordingly to whatever happens as you go along. There's no real um, plan ahead of time for this kind of painting. You sort of think to yourself, yes, I'm going to paint a lighted window in a dark wall. And then you just, um, if you've got one to use as a model, you know, if you happen to have a lighted window in a dark wall available or a photograph of one, then by all means, use that as your model. Um, but otherwise, just paint from imagination. I think that's probably the easiest way. After all, we're supposed to be doing this for therapy more than anything else. It's... Uh, it's not, um, it's not fine art. Well, no, it's not fine art. It's just fun. So let's just play. You can lift out as much as you put on. Some people do a lot of this. I do actually quite a lot. Um, that tissue gets a, a lot of uh, use and uh, it's, it's not because I feel that's a mistake. It's because I want to just lighten the tones a bit and come back in change it a little bit. I think you could probably call this intuitive painting, what I do. I don't like to label things and I don't like to sort of, you know, give things names because it seems rather pretentious, but I do kind of 
um, work intuitively. And here I'm putting in some orange into the yellow and letting it just sit and pool a little bit, which is, I think, a really nice effect. I really like the way that works. I'm enjoying exploring the, um, uh, the depiction of light. It's not something I've actually done much of, the idea of, you know, it's basically artificial light and natural light we're trying to, to achieve, you know, light of the moon, light of the stars, and now light of candles. I think tomorrow we've got um, lamps in the garden. And yeah, you see, if I hadn't have put in the bars at the bottom there, it would be much easier when I come to do the leaves because I've got the yellow behind and that's fine. Green over yellow is perfectly okay, but green over gray is, well, the gray just kind of grins through and it makes a nuisance of itself. So, so that, was, that was something I learnt. So when you do yours, you, you, you put the plant in first. I just turn the paper a little bit to the side as I'm doing these freehand lines here that I want to get reasonably straight. Somebody was saying the other day, I don't know how people manage to paint straight lines. Well, if people can, then it's because they've practiced a lot, really. It's just practice. Same as everything else. You know, I always think that one of the best analogies that I've heard for um, why people struggle to learn to paint is somebody said, if you wanted to learn to play the piano, you wouldn't expect to be able to paint, to play the piano perfectly after a couple of days of practicing, would you? Or even weeks. It's a lifetime thing and very much, uh, very similar to that is, um, is art. If you want to paint, you have to practice. Unless you just want to paint sort of um, random splodges and doodles and make marks and all that kind of thing, in that case, and you don't need to practice because it doesn't matter. And that's also good as well. But if you want to make something look, look like something, you probably do need to practice a bit. which is what we're doing. And as I'm watching myself do this, I'm thinking to myself, I don't know why you didn't leave those pots empty. You could have left the pots empty when I got down to painting them. I didn't have to put plant in there, but, but I did. <coughs> so there we are. And I'm just putting in some darker shadows where it seems likely that they would be, which, um, don't forget that whenever you put in something like shadows or whatever, and they seem very dark, perhaps too dark, um, watercolour, one of its characteristics is that it dries lighter. Unlike gouache, <clears throat> opaque watercolour dries darker, um, but um, transparent watercolour dries lighter. And then we need a nice strong shadow down the back here behind the shutter. And I'm using brown, I think that's that's burnt umber and just letting it do its own thing. Notice I don't use the brush, I don't hold the brush on the ferrule. Some people hold it much closer to the hairs, <clears throat> but um, um, personally I don't. I hold, I tend to hold, I don't always. <clears throat> I've got a frog, frog in my throat today. <clears throat> I don't hold um, the brush close to the hairs because I think you get better movement. <clears throat> if you hold it further back. I'm painting around the pots here with some nice dark um, shadowy colours. I've put a bit of purple in there, I think. Um, so you've got a kind of slightly bluish, mauvish sort of tinge. It's always a good idea to have, when you're doing any kind of painting, to have warm and cool on the opposite sides of the painting. So on the right, we've got the orange from the, the burnt sienna that I used in, in there. And on the left, we've got the that's, that's the warm side, and then the cool side with the violet, um, which gives a much more painterly effect. And now I'm just using the hairdryer briefly to try and dry it off. Um, you don't need to be afraid of using the hairdryer, really, or some kind of tool to, to do this, because 
um, it doesn't really make that much difference to the end result. And now I'm just mixing up some dark colour here. I think I um, did something with some black and some burnt umber. So I've got a nice dark um, brownish black and I'm going to paint um, the shadowy bits on the pots here just to start with. And uh, that's very intense. And the idea is then to come back with some uh, more water really and just drag that across so you get a nice uneven effect on your pot without too much hassle. And uh, again, looking back on this, um, and this is why I always try to do um, a practice run before I do the videos. I always, almost always, unless it's a really intuitive painting that I'm doing, um, I do do, I do it first. I don't show you the first take, so to speak, because often I make little um, adjustments. So here, if I did this one again, or next time I do something like this, I would make those pots a bit bigger, just a bit bigger, I think. And I wouldn't have a gap between them like that. I've, at that point, I was thinking, um, ah, yes, now should I put a third one in there? I was thinking, and then I thought, no, I'm going to make a, a point of that and, and just leave that um, empty, the centre bit there. And I'm, this is where I'm just thinking about whether or not to make the one on the right a little bit bigger, which I think I am about to do. Just made that one a little bit bigger, but I wish I'd made the one on the left a bit bigger as well. But um, I couldn't actually do that because, yeah, you see, I'm thinking, can I make that bigger? But no, I would spoil it if I did. So I'll put some shadow there, just give it a bit more substance and make the shadows behind it a little bit stronger. And and there we are. Um, and so now the, the difficult bit is coming soon where I'm going to try to put the plants in the pots and I'm going to discover that this is not as easy as it ought to be. If I had done this before putting in the bars, it would have been so much easier. And there you see the problem. And actually, to be honest, I think I should have stopped there, really. Maybe just put a few more bits of green in and some, and some um, stems and then called that done because it is only a sketch after all. Um, but yeah, you know, fiddle, 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 like we all do. I could have stopped there, should have, should have stopped there, should have just put in some stems and stopped, but I didn't, I kept going. So let this be a, a demonstration of when less is more. I'll probably do this painting again in a slightly different way. Um, make a, a proper video of it, perhaps, I might do. Or I might just do it again for my own sake. I felt I needed to darken the shadow on the bottom of the shutter there a bit too. To tell you the truth, I've never actually painted a lit window from outside before. It's not something that I... Most of my painting up until uh, this year has been um, strongly nature-based. I didn't really realise that, actually, until I started to do things that weren't, uh, like the lighthouse. I don't really think that's a nature painting, is it? Um, and the lamp, the lantern, and so on and so forth. Uh, so this is this is a learning process for me as well. Definitely thinking to myself, ah, enough's enough, guys. Enough's enough. I think we're getting towards the end. Let's put a bit more shadow up the top here behind the shutter. And it doesn't matter if your lines aren't straight. If you live where I live, there's very few straight lines here anyway. In the middle of the back of beyond, otherwise known as Central Finisterre in France, um, everything's falling down, crumbling into ruins. Nobody wants to repair anything. And 
straight lines are a thing of the past. Oh, by the way, if you want to buy a house in France, the one next door to me is for sale. Yep, 80,000 euros they want for it. So anyone want to come and live in France? There's a perfect opportunity there. Wouldn't mind having one of you next to me, somebody from California maybe. You wouldn't like the weather, but uh, like they say here, if you don't like the weather, just wait five minutes and that's true enough. Yes, the house is for sale. It does need a little bit of work, but um, yeah. And I, I thought I would put in a little bit of white here just to, um, uh, I don't know why really, <laughs> just see what happened. And then I thought, mm, I don't know. And I think I dabbed it out again after it had dried. And then I thought, I think I'll try a little bit of line work here and just see how that's going. It's all an experimental thing, you know, guys. So we're putting in just a few straight, strong lines using my Tombow pen. And I, and I was debating at this point whether to actually do a lot of line work all over it, and I could have done. But then I thought, no, I'm not going to do that. I'm going to leave it like this because um, wonky lines and all, I quite like the effect. No, it's not fine art. No, it's not a masterpiece. No, it's not worth framing. No, none of that. But I learned something and I enjoyed it. So there we are. That was the main thing, I think. Don't you? Wouldn't you agree? It was raining at the time when I did this. I think today, finally, it might have stopped. We've had rain since the beginning of October. So if you don't like dry weather, um, where you live, come here. Because we have plenty of rain. I was just checking my diary from last year. And apparently this time last year, we'd had very, very, very cold weather. I remember now. This year it's been mild, but absolutely windy and wet. As you can see, I'm doing a good sales job for the house next door. Ah, oh, well, you know, whatever. The weather, you can't, um, you can't fix it. So there we are, that's the end of this. I hope you enjoyed it and I will see you again soon in various places online. Bye, everybody.